Hey, I'm Summer McMurray, and I'm here with Jen Bash, one of our awesome physical therapists here at Carolina Pediatric Therapy. And we've been answering questions uh, from families about teletherapy and how things are going, and you know, questions like what would the therapy session be like, uh, what activities are you going to use to keep my child engaged? And so I asked Jen on today so she could maybe talk to us a little bit about how she's preparing families. And uh, the first thing I like to start with is. Uh, what is one question that parents are asking you when they're getting started with this and how are you answering that question for them? So probably the most common question that I'm getting is how does PT work over a virtual platform? Um, PT tends to be um, very hands-on with a therapist. We're doing a lot of movement um, and it can be really tricky, I think, for parents to understand, well, how am I going to do that role of a PT? It doesn't always seem like it's that intuitive, but I found that this is a great time to coach parents and really educate them on why we're doing what we're doing. I'm really breaking down the steps, um, trying to use my words as well as visually using my body. Um, with infants, I have a baby doll that I actually use that I'm using to demo for parents. So really, um, it can happen and it's going great. It's just, um, kind of different than it would look typically in a clinic. Okay. Are you, are there something that you're asking parents on the front end to have prepared when you start that session? Are you bringing, asking them to bring certain things to the session? Sometimes, usually it's just enough of an open space um, where their kid's going to have a little bit of room to move, to either do some crawling or rolling or things like jumping jacks. But I'm really finding that I'm just using a lot of household items during our sessions. So pillows are a great thing to balance over. Masking tape on the floor is great to act as a balance beam or something to jump over. So really it doesn't take a whole lot of fancy equipment. Uh, anything around your house usually um, we're able to find and kind of make do and be creative in that way. Yeah, I think that's really great. And it really does line up a lot with the early intervention model of doing parent coaching and using what families have at home because they're going to have access to that, those materials through the week between our sessions. So it's nice to be able to coach families to use things that they already have, so they don't have to go purchase anything extra. Or Absolutely not. And, you know, while the clinic is a great setting for treatment, it's artificial in a way. You know, our clinic stairs are different than the stairs that a family has going down to their basement. Those might be steeper or their outdoor stairs might kind of have more gaps in between that makes it a little more challenging for kids and their spatial awareness. So I've actually found it really beneficial to kids that I never get the chance to see at their home. It's been really great to work on some of these skills in that exact environment that parents are expressing that they want their kid to be better at. Yeah, well, I always think the ultimate goal of therapy, even when it's provided in the clinic, is that ultimately they're going to take those skills and they're going to transfer those over into the home or the school or the community environment, wherever they're going. So this is a nice time to be able to practice those, <laughs> those generalization skills. It's, um, yeah, specificity is what, you know, the technical term that we learn, you know, we're practicing exactly in the environment that we want these kids to perform in. So it's been great. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. And families have been uh, pretty well adapted to all of this. They have. I mean, like myself, we're learning where to put the computer or the tablet or the phone to kind of get the full angle um, and all just kind of being patient with each other as we figure out the best um, configuration for that. But yeah, as I've had sessions um, in subsequent weeks with families, we've kind of found what works, whether it's the living room or the porch or something like that and really learning how to set up that virtual therapy environment. That's awesome. Well, so one thing I wanted to do today was to show families a few of the activities that we do with children in a virtual therapy session, how you've adapted those. And I thought we could do one for each age group. So uh, infants and toddlers, uh, then we could do a, a preschooler kind of an activity, and then uh, also a school-aged child if you have those. Sure. So, um, so like I kind of mentioned earlier, I do have um, a little baby doll that I'm using for a lot of my infants. So if I'm working on something like torticollis where I need to work on um, stretching the neck, I kind of have my baby doll that I can use to kind of demo my hands and talk through what type of pressure I'm expecting, where I'm putting a hand block. I'm stretching like that. And I've also used this, you know, to kind of demo some things when we're talking about tummy time, kind of where to place support and that. So I found that this is really helpful 
helpful and a nice visual for parents when they're trying to figure out, you know, how to support an infant because a lot of times it's going to take a lot of hands-on support. Right. And it's nice. So you're at, you're demonstrating and they've got their infant in their lap and they're doing exactly what you're doing. So it's kind of a mirroring activity. Yeah. So that's been a really nice tool that I've been using. Um, for our toddler age, that can be a little tricky because toddlers kind of all over the place. And we're talking about a lot of time walking, running, jumping, climbing. So what's been a really fun activity is I've had parents take a bunch of different pillows, um, whether it's like a couch pillow or, you know, a standard sleeping pillow and kind of place them all over the floor and set up an obstacle course okay. where kids are having to either, you know, kind of leap from one to the other or step from one to the other and kind of keep their balance. It's a really nice activity to work on visual spatial awareness, balance, coordination, and kids really like, you know, making a big obstacle course in their living room, especially on these rainy days. Yes, and how about siblings? Because I guess, you know, siblings are home right now, too, with little ones. And so how are you able to incorporate any sibling into the I'm always a fan of having siblings participate. I think that, you know, it helps the patient that I'm focusing on really try their best. And it's another, you know, it's a child close to their age usually mirroring that activity as well. So um, I'm always game to have siblings participate to be somebody to you know, practice catching with or kicking with, I actually find in many instances that it's helpful to have siblings that want to play along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad that we're able to involve the siblings in some of the care that we're providing, especially because they're all at home right now, just trying to navigate their virtual learning as well. Exactly. Okay. And then, they, you know, if they see that their sibling is participating in something fun, you know, I totally expect the other siblings to want to join in and it makes it a little bit easier on the parent as well to have all their kids engaged in one activity for a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. How about school age children? So school age children, I've actually found that they thrive in the virtual environment. Um, we can do a lot of some of the same exercises that we're doing in the clinic. Um, one of the things I've been using is I have these fun yoga gorilla cards. So here he's demonstrating a tree pose. I have about 25 different cards. Um, so that's one of the games that we've been playing a lot. And it really works on um, motor planning because they're having to see a picture of something and then figure out how to get their body in that mm -hmm. position, as well as work on balance or strength, kind of depending on the yoga pose that we're doing. Yeah, so school-aged children are doing really well in this environment, too, without a whole lot of support from parents. Right, but um, I actually have had parent support, too, as far as wanting to participate in some of the things that we're doing or just getting really excited to see what skills their kids have, you know, being really amazed, which is always fun to see how well their child is balancing or how high they're jumping, something like that. Yeah, it's really great to have the whole family involved in the care of our children that we're working with, too, so that's nice to get to have everybody involved. Exactly. And then my, you know, I usually have a reward system for kids that I see in the clinic, whether it's gym time or something, but we've been more creative. So we've had dance parties at the end, um, gotten to show me their rooms or I've met their pets that I've heard so much about, but never got to see. So that's also been a really fun aspect for me is kind of meeting more family members and even pets that I haven't gotten to meet. Before. Yes. So I bet they like to show off their pets as well. They do. <laughs> well, how, okay, so the last question I have is, you know, how can parents make this virtual environment the most effective for their children? If you had one piece of advice. I would say is um, just being open and patient with the technology. And um, like I said, sometimes it takes a little bit of a configuration to figure out where that tablet or where the computer is gonna be best suited. Um, but a lot of times just keeping that in one place kind of a little bit further away from the child than you would expect so that I can see their whole body, I can kind of see when they're moving throughout space um, has been really effective. And also just not worrying or stressing that you're not the best cameraman or you know that the phone's a little bit shaky at times. It's totally expected and it's not throwing me off at all. Yeah, so we're all in this together. We're all learning together. So definitely there's some hiccups in the beginning, learning the technology, but overall, it's really an effective way to do this. And so we really are wanting to encourage families to get involved and reach out to your therapist if you haven't already gotten involved in the teletherapy model during the COVID-19 crisis. And if you have questions for our physical therapy team, 
you can comment below and we will be happy to answer those questions for you and even put together some activities for you if you have questions about how to work on a certain skill. So thank you, Jen, for coming today. I appreciate you being a part of this and helping answer questions. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks.